Hey people, here we are, and this is the finals of our modern tournament. So what we have right now is Team G Beebs, aka Modern Family, against uh, Team Ironclad, aka Brave New World. So we've had to do some substitutions. We've had some issues with the tier three players showing up. Uh, with Hurian didn't show up yesterday, and then uh, today Witch Witch couldn't make it either. So uh, what we did is instead of subbing like two tier three players. Uh, we decided to sub t two tier one players. So the overall sk overall skill level of these finals is going to go through the roof. You have two very skilled players, Salsusen, of course. You might be familiar with him as being the, the captain of Team Vendetta, RIP. And also we have Avalanche. So Avalanche will be playing on Biebs' team, and Salsusen will be playing on Ironclad's team. So the positioning of these players is pretty interesting. This is going to be a Pangea map. Uh, this is a best of three for the finals. And what I did with the maps was kind of interesting. So I figured since there are three games and there are three map archetypes, Archipelago, Pangea, and Continents, why not do one of each? So the first game is going to be a Pangea, second is going to be an Archipelago, and the third, if we get to a third game, will be a Continents map. So this is Pangea, and already we can see this is interesting map positions. So we have Rico over here on the side in the back line. We got Ironclad over here. And then we have Saucy Sun, right on the front line, surrounded by two enemies, two very scary enemies, Avalanche and g -Beebs. So that's one team right here, all across the line. And then the other team is a bit more scattered. But, I mean, it's it's modern. You start with an explorer. No, Generally, there's not too many issues with people not being able to contact their team. So with that being said... Uh, what do we expect out of this? It's interesting. We'll see if there's any pop cities yet. People seem to be... Ah, okay. Yeah, a few people were saying they had very good land, including Sasusen. I mean, he does have cows and stuff. Uh, two cows, wow. <laughs> Beebs is also going to have a cow. His Beebs is good land, too. And he has the, the coal-uranium combo, which uh, is what you need for sub-cruises, actually. So regular cruises are aluminum, like in the base game. But if you don't have an aluminum and you want to make some cruise missiles in modern, you can hook coal plus uranium, and that'll give you sub cruises. So sub cruises are just regular cruises, except they go in submarines instead of in transport ships. So yeah, uh, Rico did spawn out of position, so it might be of the six sieves in the map, it might be hardest for him to get involved with the game. Uh, he's not really a grower sieve too. Normally, you want like a, a strong grower to be in a backline position. Uh, but Rico from the last game, what we saw from the semifinals, he is good at playing backline even in a more aggressive way. So what he did is he actually made like the game-winning play in semifinals. Uh, spoilers, if you want to go watch that now. Uh, there's a link to it in... Look at the semifinals from yesterday, and there's a link uh, with the second game. I had to post it as a private video because we had some video problems, uh, but it is available if you want to watch it. So those spoilers out of the way, uh, if you want to go watch it, watch it now. What happened was he actually got a kill with a cruise missile onto Saucyson the other day. So Saucyson was eliminated from the tournament, and he was thankfully brought back as a substitute for Team Brave New World. So he's going to get a second, a second shot at this. So uh, from Rico, I'd say uh, we'll see what government he goes. The other day he went order, which naturally lends itself more to aggressive kind of early game plays. Uh, but yeah, you might ex see, expect to see him make a, an early boating play onto g Beebs or onto Hoffman. So that's going to be something to look for. Uh, Ironclad is going to have space to grow here. The nearest player is going to be T uh, Hoffman over here. <laughs> I haven't been following this. Probably something funny. Uh, yeah, and Hoffman's not a super... I mean, he's the tier 2 player. He's not tier 1. Uh, and he's not especially aggressive he likes to not build too many cities and he likes to get out his stock exchange get out his factory his hydro plant so that would give ironclad plenty of space to grow uh so one thing you see here is i made this little island with three different resources and furs the idea was like a, as a boon to equality players something they could safely expand to uh because you can't actually boat here uh because you can't build boats on these tiles i guess if there was a canal I should have made it so there's a canal so that you could boat there if you wanted to. That would have been an interesting dynamic, but I think it's fun as is. Uh, but without further ado, let's check what the governments are. So yesterday what we saw was uh, 
lots of people going for moderation, a lot more than in playtesting. In playtesting, there was a, a diversity of what governments people went for. In in the actual tournament, we've seen people be very conservative and go with moderation. Because moderation is the... I mean, it's the government people, at least it has the reputation of being OP. And I'm, I wouldn't say it's OP in all cases, but people want to stick with what they've practiced, with what they know, uh, with what they've practiced most, at least. And what they are sure is good, as opposed to what they think might be good. So yeah, uh, I'd expect to see mostly moderation, maybe a couple orders. Let's see, though. So Scandinavia, Germany going for order again. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, England moderation. Yeah, I think it's just going to be... Yeah, Hoffman, I've never seen him play anything except moderation. Uh, Biebs, like, uh, I think I like... I had a good order game with against him the other day. Uh, and I think he might have... Like, it might have, like, triggered the hmm emojis from him. Uh, but I think he's he did do a ton of practicing with moderation, so uh, I'm not expecting him to play any order this series. Moderation is also... Uh, sorry. Moderation is closest to Republic from Future. So a lot of these players are experienced Future vets, so they're going to want to play something that's familiar to them. And the fact that it's a strong government certainly helps. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll talk a little bit about uh, the governments. So there, I didn't do any patches prior to the tourney. Like, I, I just like when I announced the tourney, I just in put the patch out there, like point zero point seven. Uh, and I told myself I wouldn't wasn't going to change anything except for bug fixes. So that was just to give the players a chance to like test play the new patch without having everything change up on them for the final version of the tournament. Now a consequence for that, there's like. I mean, it's an issue that a lot of continuously up getting games run into where it's like, if we do a lot of patches, then it's hard for people to learn. If we don't do a lot of patches, well, then people will figure out what's fucking broken and they'll do it every game and it will suck. So uh, there's an interesting trade off there. I decided to go, let's just let's see how the meta plays out. Uh, and it has kind of played like in terms of military tactics, there is definitely a variety uh, with governments. It's more focused on the two that I mentioned. Uh, but it's not like everybody's going for cruise missile rushes or something like that. No, there's more of a variety, which I appreciate. I think 0 0.7 was a, a good patch to end on, although I got a lot of great ideas for what we're going to do going forward. Equality, uh, we're going to say equality gets plus 25% production in all of their cities. So that gives people some incentive to play as them. Uh, so that's going to be fun. But in the meantime, uh, this is the patch we're playing on, of course, points, point 0.7. So let's see what people are going to get into. So uh, one thing that's strong on Pangea maps are convoys. So convoys are like a land transport unit. They're available at Communism. Uh, eight defense. Uh, four, oh, only two. Tra is that? Huh. I'm, I'm, I think I nerfed it. Yeah. Anyway, so they effectively work like galleons, except they go by land. But interestingly, if you attack a convoy and you kill the convoy... The units underneath still live, and they can like provide defensive bombard, which is strong in multiplayer. Uh, they can actually like it might show the con the units loaded into the convoy, but sometimes the defending the units in the convoy will actually defend the convoy first before the convoy gets attacked. So uh, it's good to like send them out early with a couple of drafts, and then you can like use the mobility to really like dance around and start pillaging roads, things like that. It's, it can be hard to take cities with them. Holy shit. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Ah. So what Biebs is going to be able to do... So he's going to land one, two, three, four, five. He can't do the quick numpad unload because you need to have a movement point left to do that unload. He could do that on this tile, but then he wouldn't be in range of the capital. Yes, I, I do. So I think Biebs is going to see this, and he's actually going to be able to uh, join the worker and draft because I think that Saucison probably still has to do the declaration of war prompt, which like it creates a time to... Oh, he, he can just draft. Yeah, he's just going to be able to draft. 
Um, yeah. So if there was like a wheat, if the cow was here, then if they were already at war, yeah. I mean, it's still going to be useful. Uh, anyway, yeah, if the, if the wheat was here, or a cow was here, he could like, and he was at war, he would be blocking that tile, which would restrict the growth and would keep London at size six. Uh, and that would prevent him from drafting because he needed to be size seven to draft. But yeah, there's two things here. The first is uh, this is not a high food tile, obviously. And secondly, I don't think they're already at war. So interesting. I wonder if anyone, if any of you guys were paying attention to how he did this. Was this like, did he buy it or uh, did he chop it or something like that? Did his team finally get him money? Going next. <laughs> Yeah, I really did. So Hyrian just completely no showed for the first game. Uh, it wasn't like he said, "Oh, guys, by the way, I can't play." No, he just didn't show up. Oh crap! Oh, sorry. I thought that was gonna be a militia. Oh. <laughs> Why did that city stay at size seven? Did you draft? Weird. Okay. It seems he got the defense bonus. That's why he won. Wow. <laughs> That's how it happens. For defense, uh, yeah, like... What I'm thinking is he got the defense bonus because the game still thought his London was at size six, size seven, despite the fact that you need to be, if you drafted, you're going to be at size six. That is, wow. That's some of them bullshit. <laughs> I would be so tilted if I was saucy right now. Okay, well, that's a big advantage of team for Team G Beeps then. Because it seems, I mean, if I had to guess, like, a partisan is expensive, galleons are expensive. Militias are 15 shields, partisans are 30. Uh, so I think his team just funneled him gold. Yeah, that's another thing that's probably going to get nerfed in the patch, uh, the next patch. Because I think the governments are fine early game, but generally uh, late game moderation... And freedom, just like the ability to buy stuff. You, you just basically earn 100 gold per turn, which you can spend however you want. So I think we're going to tune it down to uh, it costs 5 gold per shield as opposed to 4 gold per shield. That way we can like allocate uh, power to different, like give a different power budget to equality and freedom. Like we can actually give them small wonders. Like it's hard to give them absolutely anything because the... The extra gold and the ability to buy things with gold is just so powerful. And that would also uh, have the effect of like reducing the possibility for early game cheeses. Oh, wow. He's doubling up here. So yeah, let's look at the plays. Uh, Beeps can go for sub-cruises. Hmm. That's interesting. We'll come back to that. It's interesting he says that. So yeah, Beebs can go for subcruises. Uh, just after he hooks this, cool. Uranium doesn't do much. I guess he can go for nuclear sub to shut down the boat plays, but yeah. I also can hook aluminum and then go for actual cruises or radar artillery. He's got a lot of options. Got oil, uh, zinc for infantry, and iron. Yeah, he's got just a lot in terms of resources. Yeah, I think I remember that I gave Saucy's start better land, but I gave uh, Beavs' start more access to resources. Saucy, rubber doesn't do shit on its own. Uh, zinc will give him infantry. Coal can give him convoys. It's a bit uh, it, convoys. You got to do them early, or it's not really that much better than just sending a boat. As soon as someone gets bombers or cruise missiles, the convoys themselves are not that much use. At least with boats, you can hide them in the ocean. With convoys, you can just someone just 
sees it with an explorer and bombs it. So yeah. Uh, oh, Avalanche is really uh, sorry. This guy's Avalanche. He's really building pretty aggressively. He's gonna have access to the the oil quite soon, and he already has the zinc. Uh, he hasn't drafted at all, but that he doesn't seem to be in any a danger. Now Hoffman's going for cruises, but one, two. Oh, yeah, he, he can actually if he drops the cruises here, he can cruise Medina. Does he have a rubber? Okay, if he hooks the rubber, he can go for special forces. Special forces have two moves, and they don't take train penalties over jungles, forests, hills, etc. So he could land his stuff here. End of turn, move the cruise, uh, the special forces here, here. Uh, then cruise Medina and then take it at the start of next turn. So that would be a, a strong play. Uh, that's a lot to know and organize. I'm not sure if he's going to get that far. Uh, Rico, uh, I mean, Sulfur unlocks fighters, but fighters aren't really going to do much. Uh, sulfur plus aluminum is, is jet fighters, I believe. Wow. Sam is because he has sulfur. He's worried about being bombed. Um, yeah, I mean, lucky because, I mean, fighters themselves are not too scary. Uh, they're more like pesky mosquitoes. Uh, but oil, of course, brings bombers, and bombers in this patch are, are very strong. Uh, they're fragile. They're easy to shoot down, but if you don't have the anti-air, they just wreck you. They can both boat me. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's not really Ironclad style, at least for what I've seen out of him in modern. Future too, I guess. He's not the kind of Tau boat type player. Like, player XCC was like an old future pro who absolutely loved going for early game aggression, getting early galleons out, uh, which I think is the correct play in a lot of circumstances. Uh, Ironclad's not like that. He's very... Uh, build focused and then he does like timing pushes in the mid to late game okay so Asusen, he unloaded here and then he doubled on further up so I think Beebs can just pretty much ignore this hook the aluminum and then just cruise it once one cruise missile will take out all of these units the partisans are just so paper thin on defense that uh as uh, as which which was complain or sorry as fluff was complaining about last game they uh, <laughs> you get cruise missiles will just melt through them and take out like two cruises will take out like five units if they're partisans if you got tougher units on defense or units with more hit points like flax then uh, they'll put up a bigger fight so Rico has actually uh, gone to scout the island it's a good play guarantees him some huts he doesn't have many cities uh, so that makes it actually pretty likely that he's gonna pop. Pop a free city or a settler for him. Uh, okay, I think it's about spy o'clock. I'm kind of curious what kind of build Ironclad is going for since he didn't. He hasn't gone for any settlers. Uh, and just one worker. I'm glad we have at least a few people playing order just to like keep things a bit spicy. Uh, I mean, the different government dynamics are obviously it was one of the big selling points of the new modern mod. Four governments that all do completely different things and are all they're supposed to be balanced. Uh, obviously, the balance is a work in progress, and so when people had like a, a t enough time to figure out the patches, they discovered hey, moderation is probably the best one in this patch. Okay, uh, Hoffman's got his uh, galleon. He actually went for the, the settler here rather than the colony. I think that's a good idea just because cow is great. That's going to pump out workers like every three turns. Uh, maybe every, every two turns if you irrigate the cow. And then he can save the workers to colonize the, the rubber. Again, I don't know if he's going to think that through. That I don't know if he's, even, if he's even scouted ironclad. If he just tries to like unload cruise missiles here, he's going <laughs> to have some issues with these barbarians.
Oh, okay. Uh, so Iron, uh, Avalanche here is doing his best to establish military pri- or sorry land priority against the the Russians. Uh, the Russians are securing a city here uh, along the lake. This is going to be a good city. Two bonus grasslands, fish, and uranium. Uranium is very strong, of course. Uh, not just as a resource, but as just like a tile. It's like so many shields in commerce. And they can actually see each other here. Yeah, if I was Saucyson, I'd be thinking, hmm, I need to actually defend this because he could bomb me or cruise me and take my, my city or my settler. Uh, can't do anything too scary here. Yeah, he can get the worker. Okay, he grabs the worker. Uh, Sauces and don't make the same mistake as last game. You got your king, dude. Okay. Huh, that was good RNG. Because these guys have eight attack versus nine defense, so. So yeah, if uh, Avalanche had rushed a bomber, Avalanche could just bomb his king. <laughs> All on me can't do shit. One cruise missile do. I don't know. He might, he might not have explosives yet. Explosives is the tech you need for cruise missiles. But yeah, like one one cruise missile will take this out. He's got good vision here. Yeah, I like the doubled explorer. That means he can safely leave his, his king and cap. Okay, he's reestablishing the road. I think that's pretty important. This is actually doing good work here. I thought Biebs would have explosives already. I think, like, the current... At least when I play, what I do is... Uh, if, I, if I know I have aluminum or coal... Uh, coal uranium or oil near i'll just beeline explosives after getting the three main techs uh the three main techs being uh the draft mortars and wartime so explore uh, explosives are just two more techs and it unlocks such powerful units okay well played by saucy uh hmm ah nice Good job. Yeah, he actually blocked the the bombard there. Saucy said, "Dude, you, you can't you can't be leaving your queen in your your capital when he knows it's there." We had to talk about this after last game. <laughs> <laughs> At least just like just run it towards Ironclad or something. I don't know. Uh, if you put the boat in Saint Petersburg and you put the king in Saint Petersburg. Uh, then it actually won't show to enemies who pass it. Like, if there's an enemy sub here, it won't see. It'll just see the boat. Anyway, uh, he has the road to his capital, so he. we'll see what he's building. He's going for nuke sub. Uh, okay, maybe he's got it coming. The cruise missile coming out from York. No, he's okay. He's going for a second fighter. I mean, two fighters will eventually get rid of this. The bombing strength of fighters is pretty low, though. Maybe he might be doing uh, this. Sorry, uh. He might be doing the nuclear sub as a pre-build. So like while he waits to hook the uranium or hook the oil, he'll build this. Build the, and then he gets the wartime bonus towards the nuclear sub. And then he switches to bomber when the, uh, the bomber would be almost done. So let's see with the play coming out. Okay, he is gesturing towards the rubber. Uh, if you're going for like a timing push like this, you don't want to be going for third cities. That's not really how you want to do things.
Yeah. Avalanche knows what is up. He's no superfluous cities. All of them are towards securing a resource or towards putting pressure on the Russians. But yeah, this what he's done in London here. I mean, let's take a look. Beebs love. I know he loves to go for the quick stock exchanges and stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a stock exchange. Yeah. Okay. He did get the stock exchange. Okay. He almost disordered, but now he's good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He cleaned up these ones. Yeah. So if I was him now, I'd go because he has the pressure relief on this front uh, from Avalanche. He should go for an expansion. He needs to get more cities out. Uh, but yeah, Soft Systems Attack has been quite good at like slowing down Beebs. Like Beebs would have a Hydra plant within two turns from now. If <laughs> either that or he'd have like three more cities uh, if it wasn't for this attack from Soft System. So great idea from Soft System. Uh, some pillaging. I mean, infantry are just great at pillaging in this in this mod. Ah, okay. Lucky coming out from Saucis in there. Ooh, okay. Let's turn on. Yeah, sure. And we're t we'll turn sound on. Just from experience, uh, the sound does give good cues as to if someone's being attacked. You kind of hear the combat. Is that too loud? Okay, that seems better. And I'll be concerned. Sometimes it, it gets weird, like way louder or way quieter than I expect it to be. And I don't want the game to be <laughs> completely unwatchable due to the ridiculous sound quality. All right. So yeah, uh, we got a, a two-way... I mean, it's, it's good. So Saucisons kind of bought himself some time here, but eventually, yeah, you're seeing the settler coming out from Biebs. He is going to be able to make a play soon, eventually, towards St. Petersburg and Moscow. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't... I definitely start to be expect to be bombed because he realizes that these units got bombed here, so he should be expecting it coming for him, his, his core soon. So he should be continuing to draft. Ah, uh, okay, good. He's blocking this uh, this tobacco tile. That's important. Oh, and he's got a veteran infantry. Yeah, that's gonna do a lot of good. Still leaving the open queen. This is a bad play from Saucyson. Like, I don't know, either he hasn't scouted the guy that's, like, border to border with him, which in this mod is a, is a huge mistake, or he has scouted, he knows he has oil and sulfur, and he's still leaving his king unguarded. You're going to get cruised, con 289 gold. Yeah, if I was Saucison, I'd just be buying up flax. It's just generally not a good idea to keep your, your king in your cap, too. So if I'm like, let's say I'm Biebs, right? I'd have no information about Sasson other than what his country looks like. If I'm just like looking to cruise him for the sake of cruising him, I'll cruise his capital because if you get bu good buildings out of capital, that's quite valuable. Uh, so yeah, if he sends like a, a sub, a sub, a nuclear sub with two cruise missiles, and he doesn't know what to target, he's going to target the king. Okay, that's smart too. Anything but what you're doing now. <laughs> if he could reroute to Novgor Novgorod, that'd be pretty safe. Yeah. Or he could just like walk it with some infantry, and that would work. <laughs> I love the waddle animation. That's fantastic. Nope. Moves it back. Ah! <laughs> the explorer sees it. <laughs> Good. Um, dude. <laughs> yeah, advancing his vision. If I was also, I'd just draft now, and you can see the explorer draft and take the explorer. Okay, 
Okay, he's going for the city and the rubber. Again, uh, I mean, I think his play generally is pretty good here to go for the rubber and the special forces. I think that's what he's doing. But all these, like, extra ornaments he's doing to, like, make things better in, in people, some people's mind. Like, he, he's stopping on the way to spell, smell the roses. He is. You can skip some steps, and if you skip the steps, then your timing push will be a lot more effective. So he took a time to build Nanking, took a time time to build Qing Sao. I think Canton was a good play because it's got the cow. It does have the aluminum too, so that saves you a worker on the colony, and it will produce a lot of workers. Uh, but these two cities were not necessary. I bet if we look in these cities, we're going to see some unnecessary buildings. The focus should be on putting everything into this timing push. So uh, let's take a look what kind of buildings he has. I wouldn't be surprised to see like a hydro plant or something. Uh, oh, that's awkward. I mean, he doesn't need to draft a lot because he's in a safe position. So I'd, I'd honestly rather go for the stock exchange over the temple. And because the stock exchange actually gives you uh, it, it has the additional effect in modern of giving you plus 50% to the luxury slider. So it's a big power spike. Uh, and bank only actually does the same thing, actually less. It does less than uh, a marketplace does. So if you go for bank, I, I would normally, unless something happens that distracts you and makes you adjust, like unless you get attacked or something like that. I would say you should go for the stock exchange afterwards. If not, you should just go for wartime immediately. So yeah, as time progresses, you're gonna see more cities coming out from Ironclad. Uh, he's gonna have more sentries out, like you're seeing here. Uh, he's going to have more units, and he's just generally going to be more able to deal with this attack. He's going to have more gold uh, stockpiled. He's going to have more production in his capital. So even if he does lose Damascus, he's going to be able to turn it around. Whereas if you did like a direct attack with the special forces and the aluminum or the, the cruise missiles onto Damascus, and you'd had it done about turn 22, we're at turn 21 right now, uh, and I think he could have had it done that early. Uh, if you'd done it then, it would have been a lot more effective. And once you get that timing push out, then, then, because like behind that timing push, you can just go for infrastructure, right? If you do the timing push early, you know you're going to get something off of it. Uh, and it will, at the very least, it will distract the enemy. And while the enemy is distracted, that's when you go for greedy stuff. That's when you go for your factories, your stock exchanges, your hydro plants. So when you go for your cities and your granaries and your second cities and things like that. Okay, we're starting to see some... Uh... Jesus Christ, Ossison. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a little thing in Civilization Three called a recon. So what recon does is... No, it's not the player in charge of Germany. Recon is actually an ability that lets you see someone else's uh, a patch of land and the important thing relative relevant to multiplayer with recon is that when you recon somebody they don't know that you've reconned them so for all saucius and knows either beebs or avalanche could be reconning <laughs> fantastic okay we got the the flying settlers coming out from rico good call So in this scenario, uh, you can actually pair drop settlers from airports and air bases. That's most relevant for uh, equality because equality has access to very like two shield airports. Uh, so they can instantly start pair dropping settlers as soon as the game starts, pretty much. Other governments can do it too, and often it's more convenient than using a boat. So uh, good play from Rico here. Secure uh, secure himself a base on this island. Looks like uh, there's a weird bug where people pop infantry. I have no clue where that's coming from. <laughs> I 
That's another thing that's going to have to get adjusted. Yeah, like the one thing I said I might adjust. Uh, right, like right before the tournament even. Uh, was if there was any bugs, I would fix any bugs. Uh, this is a bug. You're not supposed to be able to pop infantry from huts. But I, I can't figure out what's causing it. <laughs> I think I'll just switch it so... Uh, like, I'll switch the position in the Civilopedia of infantry versus partisans. Uh, so I think that will make it so you pop partisans from huts instead, which is more manageable. It's, it's the movement points on the infantry, which is troubling, because you can pop infantry near someone else's uh, land, and then just double move into them, like turn 15 or something like that. Yeah, this is a good a good thing to do with infantry. Just scout the land, look for barbarian huts, and claim some free gold. And he's actually... See where the settler goes. Yeah, he's established land priority up here. So I think he thinks it's pretty safe to send the settlers north. Again, we'll have to wait and see what Hoffman has plans. Like, I mean, at this point, the, like, the longer you wait as Hoffman, the more prepared you need to be for the fact that someone might sink your boat. Like, the longer you wait on your timing push, the more likely it is that there's submarines or destroyers out. Kind of curious what... Oh, Beebs is just going to cruise him. That's... That's sound. God, at least Saucisson's finally guarding his king. One, two, three... Four. Yeah, he could actually do a quick numpad move onto St. Petersburg if he had a boat in Nottingham. I think St. Petersburg might even be empty, so he might not need to. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes. Like, sometimes it will show the fighter above the city, despite the fact there are units in, and sometimes the fighter is a sign that there's nothing else in the city. Ooh. Okay, it looks like a, a bombing run onto the, the militia over there. Militias are really weak. They're two four ones, uh, but they are very good for so like just soaking up damage basically they're good sponges if you just need like bodies in cities or bodies on tiles and that basically seems to be what uh ah he's doing some recon he sees the cruise yeah you need to go for flax flax counter cruises uh ooh i like that animation I play with movement animations turned off, so some of these I've... Like, who the fuck <laughs> uses a regular cruise missile when they're playing Civ 3? Certainly not me. Ah, uh, like the war... Yeah, okay, he just cru cruised St. Petersburg. Oh, yeah, he did have the flak there. Yeah, and the flak did what it was supposed to do. It soaked up, soaks up the cruise hit. Uh, I take the flak out and move it to Moscow. Just in case it gets cruised again. And also because, dude, you only had one guy guarding your king. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, he's just mass... Uh, Avalanche is just massing planes. Eventually, he's going to come into contact with Ironclad. Hmm. So, a few units here from... Ah, okay. Ironclad's got a destroyer. That's a great play. Uh, so, establishing naval priority will pr protect both him and will protect Saucisson too. And destroyers can kill uh, nuclear submarines. Like, they, I mean, they can see... Anything can kill a nuclear submarine, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, maybe not like a musket. <laughs> uh, they can, more importantly, they can see nuclear submarines. <laughs> Ooh, I just heard a rumbling.
Oh, bomb coming out here. Wonder what he's. Oh, he shot someone down. Crucial. Okay. Yeah, it's important to get the snowball rolling. If I were him, I'd actually go for a radar tower right here. And that will more effectively allow him to shoot down planes. And he needs to get rid of this fucking vision. Seems like they're both bombing me. Yeah. Ooh, that's it. <laughs> Did you see that slide there? Holy shit, that was some Tokyo Drift right there. <laughs> I wonder if we see it again. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. I think he was waiting for when he had a land attack. Okay. So that was a big pickup for uh, Team Brave New World. So killing the subcruises. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll encourage... Yeah, that's useful, because there's no way I can tell that. Oh, nice. Yeah, Sawson. Yeah, Team Brave New World is kind of pushing back here. Focusing on the road. Yeah, I think Novgorod's pretty safe, generally, just because there's so much forest. I mean, if you get spo special forces, which uh, do have more movement, that'd be a bit more dangerous. Yeah, like I said, if he did the attack turn 22, it would have been a fabulous attack on Damascus or Medina or wherever. There's a fucking cruiser out at sea now. And he's got land priority too, so he might be able to see from the land. So that's why you got to do your timing pushes early. Supplies to the future. Uh, maybe not to QC so much, but... People often make the mistake of over-preparing. Like, they just see things from their perspective, and they don't think of how things are from the enemy's perspective. I guess it does apply to QC. Yeah, people often wait till like the enemy has pikemen before they do their fucking swordsman rush. It's like, of course you failed. You tried to have your cake and eat it too, and if you have your cake and eat it too, it's gonna taste off. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know where I was going with that. If you try to do an attack but you don't commit to it and you commit to building, then your attack's gonna fail. Because even if your opponent commit, commit, commits to building, well, they're the defender, and defenders have advantages. Unless they're super greedy and disrespectful, you're probably going to fail if you wait too long. Yeah, look at this. It, it gets fucking spotted. Good job. Like, your cruises are useless now. He's going to guard against them. He's probably just... I, I'd just probably pack it up and go home. Pack it up, go, go home, or land it immediately next turn. You got two options, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, you had an explorer. If you if you kept the explorer handy, you could have checked for for scouts. Oh. Yeah, I, I feel like I've been pretty consistent about the game this throughout the game that. Uh, Hoffman should have done this push earlier. It, a good idea for push, it's just not coming soon enough. Hoffman should have done the push earlier, and he should have, uh... Crap. <laughs> oh, yeah, and one of the, the risks to doing it later is that there's more likely to be enemies who can spot it or enemies who can kill it. I mean, Saucison's bombed out, so you effectively have three producing nations against two... And Rico's probably the second less, least productive here. I mean, there are some perks to going for a more aggressive build. Or sorry, a, a more building build. It's just one of those perks are not killing Ironclad. <laughs> this is going to be a mild inconvenience to my Ironclad at best. Uh, I don't know. Ironclad kind of short on units. I feel I'll die soon. Yeah, that's, can't say I disagree with that. So let's take a look at the armies. Oh my god. Yep, 
Yeah, he actually only has oh three flags, so four military units plus the three flags. That's not bad for four cities. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know what Ironclad's going for. Let's see what Ironclad's going for. Huh, he's not going for anything. <laughs> oh, he, he can draft here. That, that's still pretty funny. <laughs> I'm going to get a screenshot of that. <laughs> Probably the worst <laughs> barb spawn location I've seen. Like I've seen them on like spawn on like colony roads a bunch, but never that close to two different colonies that are unguarded. <laughs> and I mean, he can commit these units to defending south, but he he does have to worry about this, right? So the good news is that Rico didn't actually hit the galley in this or hit the ships this turn. So this is a, a cruiser, not a submarine. A submarine will has stealth attack, and in multiplayer, what that does is it will target the weakest unit. Uh, so if this was a submarine, he could just attack the galleon outright. Galleon's dead. If he attacks with the cruiser now, uh, they'll attack the frigate. The frigate will die, but you can't attack the galleon next. You sure about that? <laughs> Dude, if you if he sees you, like, you got on load. Yeah, he committed two infantry. This will be a profound misplay if he doesn't unload these at least end of turn. He should have done it last turn, to be honest. Uh, with it, Unload the cruises at least, and then maybe you could save a guy to... Okay, there you go. Do it. There you go. Oh, beautiful. And he doesn't have the infantry now. Or oh, he's got the infantry in Mecca, I guess. <laughs> Run. Oh, God. Watching these animations. Oh. Well, I probably got some buildings out. Nice. So attack with the partisans. <laughs> eh. Yeah, okay. He attacked with the partisans. Oh, no. He, he still can't get Damascus. Sweet. Well, if there were any buildings in Damascus, they are now gone. Congrats. And it looks like Mecca got cruised too, maybe? Or espionage. I don't understand how they keep killing units in my cap. I mean, you might be getting cruised. Oh, uh, God. I'm going to keep on checking on the Vikings, because fuck the Vikings for intercepting my spy. There's probably still the, the flag. Oh, huh. Uh, when you fail like uh, an attempt to find a spy, you get a, a flag. And as long as the f there's a one-third chance each turn the flag disappears, but as long as it's active, you all attempts to plant spies will fail. So let's check on Scandinavia. Lots of infantry, lots of planes. That's about it. To exhaust. Yeah, he's kind of spread thin right now. I guess they must be continuously bombing Moscow. Uh, if I was him, I'd just buy a ton, like, buy flax and partisans. Keep on buying flax and partisans. Partisans for the defensive bombard, flax for the anti air, and because they have a lot of hit points. Huh, Rico actually landed a, a radar artillery here. That's an interesting decision. It's unguarded, so there's a bunch of potential counterplay against that. Uh, but radar artillery, of course, have the, the radar ability. So they can see... Oh, we're coming with the crews. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 
Okay. A definitely a good idea for future casts to turn on animate moves. It's so fun to be able to watch the the kings like waddle his little legs. Mecha gets cruised again. <laughs> or maybe he disbanded? I don't know. That's not gonna do much good. Like I don't think the planes are in Moscow or in Oslo, so even if you I mean, if they were in Oslo, then you'd need a lot of cruises to be able to empty out the city because cruise missiles target uh, air units and naval units first before they target land units. Looks like Saucerson shot down somebody else. He needs to go for radar tower. I mean, he does have oh, only three workers. That's not so many. Still, it's worth sacking one for the radar tower, I feel. Ah, he's getting bombed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's a big range. Good. Oh yeah, that's I think that alone has completely shut down Team Brave New World. Like with Ironclad being disabled like that. Like cr cr craters take a long time to clean up, so that means it's gonna be in no oil, no no iron or coal for a while, while too. It's great that you have these guys out for naval priority, but that's not going to stop. Beebs can just walk into St. Petersburg if he wants to. Just do a double move with an infantry. Uh, he needs some attack against Beebs, but at this point, Avalanche is probably the bigger threat. And Avalanche, like, good luck. They're getting through that. Like, you need to road up to Arhus, but good luck doing that when you're being bombed. Yeah, mass bombers in this, uh, in this patch is very strong. So normally what happens is one person will start bombing someone, the other person will get anti-air. They'll be doing, like, kind of fine, kind of okay. And then the player with the, the mass bombers will just switch on to another player who doesn't have anti-air, and they've built up, the bombing player has built up a big stack of bombers, and it's just, they do too much damage, they're, they're too good. Uh, and of course that's supposed to be an effective tactic, but bombers are just, there it is. Vikings destroyed the Russians. I don't know how he did it, but he, he got it done. Oh, he must have, oh, his king was over here, so he bombed the king. <laughs> well played, well played. Honestly, all of this is a few, huge fluke. Beebs should have died early game, too. <laughs> uh, so I was in, yeah, for people who are watching this and who don't know, you can tell whether it's a kill or not. So you saw in a, mes uh, a message, the Vikings have destroyed the uh, the Russians, and then Saucerson has left the game. So first of all, you know if it says they've destroyed them, then that was a kill, right? Uh, but if you don't have contact with the two civs, you're not going to get the destroyed... Uh, the, the Vikings message, but it'll say instead was be would be the Russians have been destroyed. Sausin has left the game. If it's like a drop or he just quits, what it'll be it'll be in the opposite order. It'll be Sausin has left the game, and then the Russians have been destroyed. So that's how you can tell uh, whether it's a drop or not. It, it's still good for him to say kill. It's also just like fucking. It makes you feel like a badass just being like, yo, kill. <laughs> uh, but you shouldn't if if they don't say kill, you, sh you should know to play on. Being bombed by a German. It's not bombed. If he gets anti-air out against that, this would be hilarious. Uh, hmm. I'm only seeing one radar, and it's not like carriers are invisible or anything. Oh, God. What happens if you made the stealth carrier? <laughs> That'd be sick. Really, you don't know where. You got two explorers kind of doing nothing here. Go look. This isn't exactly a, a Scooby-Doo mystery right now. 
or I guess it is a Scooby-Doo mystery because we think it's a mystery, but there's actually nothing supernatural going on, and it's the most obvious answer that's just some angry old guy. Angry old guy with a truck. <laughs> Uh, looks like the second round of bombing wasn't quite as effective. Yeah, uh, Ironclad's got some fighters up. Uh, I'm not sure. What's the range on fighters? Eight. So, uh, you can only actually intercept within half of your operational range. So, one, two, three, four. So, yeah, anything here, like on these tiles, will not be intercepted by these fighters. And, he, uh... Avalanche can only actually bomb up to as far as these tiles. So if he bombs these three tiles, okay, yeah, he can intercept with these faraway fighters. Anything else, though, um, these fighters aren't going to do shit. Uh, if I was Avalanche, I'd just bomb Mecha. Kill the fighters in the city. So yeah, if you're using like battleships or radar artillery, it's a good idea to pivot them around regularly. So if a make people like rely on getting mm, continuous recon like they have to keep on checking where they are uh all you'd have to do is scout this like one fighter scout this with one fighter and you can double move on to it with your infantry Uh, so Rico, he hasn't actually hooked any resources yet here. But we probably can't, yeah. I mean, Biebs knows how to build. Hoffman, eh, for all his faults, he, he knows how to build. Avalanche has built. I mean, we'll check out what kind of, uh... I mean, often it feels like, oh, you have to go for these big ticket buildings and the person who builds the most uh, benefits the most but he didn't even get a stock exchange he just built a bunch of cities and built a bunch of units and when you stockpile enough units you take favorable engagements and when you take favorable engagements you keep your units and when you have a bunch of units you can expand safely and you can build your factory like he's doing now Uh, good luck getting that iron. <laughs> probably better off to... You could probably pair drop onto that iron. Probably better. Who's got a naked king? Ah, uh, here. Yeah, probably. I mean, I can't see anyone having a unit in position here, but... I like the island in the middle of this way, man. That would have been fun. Ooh. Uh, congrats on the general. Run away with the general. No, not... <laughs> That's the opposite of what I told you to do. <laughs> oh, God. I should probably disable great generals in this, or at least make them different. That seems really OP, just getting a free army. Yeah. Uh, so one thing, if you really, like, if you know something important's coming up and you want to avoid that, you can do uh, do not auto-select units in multiplayer. But generally, you don't want that setting on because it makes your movements really slow because you constantly have to, like, find where your next move it, next available unit is. Uh, so you can draft here and take protect his uranium. Can't find his carrier. Hmm. If only you had some units that could go out and check. 
the best part about this is he God. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. The best part about this is he, uh... He doesn't even seem to know. You should be able to tell it's not a bomber, right? It should say... It'll say bomb enemy bombing run successful. Uh, and if not, it has to be a ship or some kind of artillery. I'll ask them. Are those... Yeah, but I mean, the more units you kill, I mean, he killed a unit and he got out, right? He gained more. He, he didn't actually lose anything. Huh. I guess you don't have a lot of elite units in future. Anyway, yeah, we can make it so you can generate them, but they can only hurry production, not make an army. Eh, it might be confusing. Who knows? Anyway, yeah, I think we said we'd check on what Rico is doing. So let's see what's up in Berlin. Leipzig is actually quite big. Okay, he's got his factory. He's going military academy. If he just drops off an army here, that'd be pretty effective. Uh, Like, what could he build... Coal plus zinc plus... Uh, he's got no rubber. And no iron. Maybe iron sometime soon. Scandinavia? Oh, he, yeah. Scandinavia lost most of their planes, and they seem to have chilled on the idea of aggression. Forget if these islands were intent. Yeah, this island was not intentional. Take your time, maybe half. Yeah. Yeah, just hide it up here, and then you can unload some cruises and double into Najran. Now let's see what. Okay, Ironclad has some cruises, some infantry. I'm guessing there's a, a nuke sub under there. Has he lost his destroyers? Yep, destroyers are gone. He had two destroyers, both gone. And those are expensive to replace. He can pretty much only build them out of Mecca. Yeah, he has no other coastal cities. Okay, he kept his buildings, crucially. Okay. He's got a lot of commerce coming. Oh, 86 commerce, Jesus. Uh, lots of commerce coming in here, but not a lot of... Not, eh, it's pretty good in shields, too, honestly, I'd say. <laughs> uh, we'll see if there's any... Probably not any buildings in Damascus, though. Yeah, whatever buildings were there are, are now gone. Yeah, you can tell that iron's a priority for them. I mean, no iron, then... It's because you're not being bombed, dude. <laughs> He's got the, the boat out. <laughs> God, imagine if Rico had like three radar artillery. <laughs> With three radars, Beebs would be completely crater and <laughs> crater. I think this play is single handedly bringing him back into the game <laughs> or bringing their team back into the game. Uh, at least some potential for it. Ah, 
I am kind of curious what Avalanche's next play is going to be. Seems to just be build a million settlers. King and Oslo, I like that. Not very likely to be targeted. Yeah, I mean, they should really get agency and then check for the enemy unit comp. Like, when you get a spy on with someone, you can do what I'm doing now. I forgot about the zoom tool. That could actually be useful sometimes. I wonder if I could just cast the entire games, all the games like this. Ah, you get the unit disc underneath. That's helpful. You can see all the whales. All the beautiful, beautiful whales. I still can't get over this ghost carry. <laughs> okay, radar, yeah, smart, radar tower. Scouts the destroyer, kills the destroyer, good. So destroyers are higher on attack than defense, and uh, this one's also a veteran. So if you can spot the enemy destroyer, you can kill it. Looks like you got the coal too. I have no clue how that happened. Did Saucyson do some bombing or something? God. This is really... If this was just like a pickup game, I would be sassing the fuck out of him. Uh, but it's not, so it's a tournament game, so I can't interfere. <laughs> Yeah, finally gonna hook this oil, uh, oil. He's got zinc too. Yeah, he's got a variety of resources. Sulfur, coal, uh, aluminum, zinc, and rubber. And oil soon. I can't even. His aluminum is just permanently disconnected. He needs more workers. I mean, I guess if I was him, maybe I'd think, oh, he has one stealth plane on me. That's why I can't intercept. I just need to build more planes to have a higher interception chance. Uh, because it does work that way. Oh, there it is. There's already a crater there, I think. So. Diminishing returns. Ooh, got the Aegis Cruiser out. So that's 12 defense on this guy. So he'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe against a destroyer, even when attacked. You think? Not that time. Yeah. Did he just finally recon it? <laughs> just draft in London. <laughs> One special force killed four units. Nice. Good job. Oh, losing workers too. That's important. He's going to need workers to clean this stuff up.
Okay. Uh, Rico. This? Is he going to make the hero play, play to win the, the, the game for his team? Okay, he's not quite there yet. Uh, I'll check Berlin. Yeah, he's building the troopers first. Uh, he is in wartime mode. Does have the factory, no power plant. It's in the list, search. <laughs> this is, okay, I, I just have to say that this is bad play. So let me walk you through the information that Hoffman has received. So he did a somewhat delayed push against Ironclad. He was spotted by Ironclad's infantry along the coast. He unloaded the units, so Ironclad knows what resources he has and that he is generally going for naval plays against Ironclad. He then walked home, left his, his boats just sitting there, and now he's loading his boats, not in the city, outside the city where they could be sunk. And Ironclad still has vision. Yeah, he, he hasn't, like, secured naval priority. If, if he had, like, vision over this area and this area, that would be fine. He doesn't, though. What's... Yeah, what are they asking me? Uh, looks like he's going for an airbase. <laughs> Fancy little explorer walk. I like how the explorers have swords, but they can't fight. I guess maybe that's what they pillage with in the base game. They don't pillage in this, but... <laughs> God. And now he can just, like, pivot and shoot again. <laughs> I mean, with with two, two infantry, you can effectively keep him, like, boxed in the south. Uh, and you can stop any galleons that will try to pick it up, so you can force him to disband or hunt him down and, and take it because you actually take the radar artillery like you actually get to capture it uh it's not like bombers where they just get destroyed a good double move i mean you had let him bomb bombard you for like eight turns the first few turns, you might like check it every turn to make sure there's no double moves. After a certain time, I think uh, he would for just assume that it was it was safe, and he could do a double move. Looks like this is unscouted too. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so he can see both this and that. <laughs> He's just going to hang out there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know that there's a leg. Uh, Civ 3 just generally has a leg. Uh, in multiplayer, of just like like one or two seconds. But it makes such great comedic timing <laughs> when you're watching it live. He just sails in, pauses for a beat. Sails away. <laughs> So Ironclad and Rico both stopped building more cities, which is, uh, yeah, I guess it's true. Not true of Avalanche at the very least. Oh, he, he looks like he bought a cruiser. Ah, he got him. Congrats. <laughs> Suede bomb my oasis. Uh, I did not. <laughs> Maybe he means ironclad. 
Uh, in this spectator mode, I didn't actually even... My spectator planes don't even have the bombard option. So <laughs> not even the potential for misclicks. Ooh, loading up his sub cruises. Lots of boats out. Let's check out London. What's he? Uh, what's he rocking there? Yeah, factory hydro plant. So he can get most things every two turns. He could be doing things every one turn if he had his tiles improved. So he should be focusing on workers right now. Uh, and it's a mistake that he's not. He is continuing to expand, though. That's good. I mean, Ironclad's pretty much stopped expanding. I think he got Basra. That's it. And the army's out. Okay. So, fun fact with armies, you can't transport them by airbase, but you can put them in helicopters. As long as all of the units in the army are the same type of foot unit. It's not enough to have just, like, three, like an infantry, a special forces, and uh, a modern paratrooper. No, it has to be three modern paratroopers or three special forces or whatever. I think he's more interested in his own tack than thwarting whatever Rico has. Uh, I'm not seeing the army. Fifteen tens. You can just. Uh, okay, great. Uh, looks like he got cruised. He doesn't really have a, anywhere to run from this. I guess, yeah, he can reach Shanghai, Nanking. Yeah, there's another cruise. And he can just probably fin finish this off with the Special Forces. I wonder if the... Uh, does the radar tower actually amplify the cruise missile? Oh. Yeah, the armies aren't enough on there. Armies are more... Like, you should have done that end of turn with the army. Like, drop it off. And then you could have taken Nanking, which would have been empty. And then you, you use the helicopter to reinforce units into Nanking. And then once you have all that crap in Nanking, like the, the helicopter and the units in the army, then if he cruises Nanking, uh, then it will target those uh, the helicopter first, uh, but it won't hit the army as hard, basically. And from there, you can like rush out another helicopter. You just have to continuously reinforce. Uh, and as soon as you, you have like the liability or the ability to spread out. Yeah, I think helicopters are, or sorry, cruise missiles are still a little too strong. Uh, just like one point of bombardment or something like that. I think what I'll do is there is like a, a mega sub cruise at the end, sub cruise plus. Yeah, uh, it doesn't actually cost the population or the shields. So what I'll do is we'll make this more cheaper and available, and then make the the base sub cruises a little bit weaker. Because I don't think they were scaled down enough to reflect the fact that the units that you're actually cruising are are weaker on defense. Okay. A one health paratrooper has landed. He could probably just honestly... Yeah. <laughs> He put the airbase too close, I think. If the airbase was here, he'd be in a much better shape, and he could still reach most of the important cities. Honestly, if I was Biebs at this point, I'd just let <laughs> Lemons do most of the heavy lifting and just, like, sail in, like, 
six sub cruises up to Mecca and then just cruise, 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 cruise. Your yeah, your uh, main your core has been disabled. Didn't really do shit against your your actual empire, but your productive capacity has gone down, and we will win a long war of attrition. He is finally starting to cl clean up this pollution, though. And if I'm not mistaken... Jesus, this is a mess. Oh, nice. He got the airbase. Like, yeah, good job on him. You got you got to kill the, the naval units when you get a chance. Like when you have a chance like this, when you have like you're the one attacking. So you basically have like a 70%, 72% chance of winning or something like that. You got to go for it. It's like the units cost the same for both players. But you have a, a greater chance of winning. Go for it. And like you just can't feel confident doing an invasion like this if you don't know for a fact uh, that you have naval priority. So you have to kill all the enemy ships to make sure you have naval priority. Especially when you get the, a shot at a favorable engagement. I wonder what's in here. This is naval priority. Good on Biebs. I'm still not super fantastic on the unescorted galleon, but that, that's that's fine as long as you. Huh? Is he being bombed? Hmm. Got a recon bug. Yeah, that's just a regular part where sometimes the the recon. Ah, uh, it just kind of, it's sticky. It just stays where you reconned. <laughs> this is the part where you're like, did you see my battleship and carrier? <laughs> yeah. Uh, congratulations to Ironclad, because he was able to pivot very quickly and get some anti-air units out. This is... Oh, huh, he unloaded, actually. I mean... That's probably the safer play. Ah, uh, he kind of pivoted off to the side, Biebs. Let's see what he's building. Uh, he hasn't quite decided yet. <laughs> Probably not Sun Tzu's. His king is in Medina. Oh, good espionage. I mean... Hello. Eh. That's not an awful unload. I guess if he unloaded here, he could snipe Medina. He has it under like 10 fighter. Okay. <laughs> well, better bring a lot of cruises. Six more? Jesus. I mean, he knows... He knows what to do. Cruises are strong. Uh, Avalanche had an early, a good early game, but I'm confused as what to as to what he's doing now. 
Yeah, they have to f find a way to make some kind of play because they're going to lose on score if they don't. So, Scandinavia. I landed his with cruises, so I so distract if you can. Finally, they actually fight. This I think this is empty. But yeah, because the Germans were on the attack, they win. Yeah, rails are nerfed. Play order or freedom. Ah, <laughs> uh, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff down that tech tree. That's like most of the good tech tree. Like, what else would you go? I guess you could have gone for paratroopers, but you're giving iron to the Germans, right? So you can't build paratroopers. What are you going to do? Uh, he could have gone for mo modern flight, I guess. Oil, aluminum, zinc. Sulfur, iron. Again, no iron. Oil, aluminum, zinc. Huh, he, he has everything else, though. Is this unguarded? Or is it just weird, like, uh, exterior bug because... Is he getting cruised or something? Anyway, we'll check Najran. Yeah, you, you can actually, it's effectively empty. Oh, this is also not, this is completely empty. Not just effectively. So he's pulling out a Najran. We should, you, yeah, I, I agree with that. His attack on Hoffman failed. Ooh. I don't know where those noises are coming from, but they sound scary. And Biebs has finally de learned to defend his curse. Oh! Yeah. You gotta defend your cruises with more than that. Uh, he's got uranium up here. I don't know why you wouldn't just go for sub cruises. It's so much safer. Cruises are like the play where you like actually land cruise missiles next to somebody's city is is just so risky. If they have an army, you get smashed. Especially if it's more than one. Like, the more cruises, the more time you have to wait to fire off all the cruises before the other person kills your defending units and takes the cruises. German pair. Where are the German? Yeah. He paratrooped his army to the island. Yeah. I, oh, God. Uh, yeah, they have no uranium, so that's kind of crucial. They can't make sub-cruise plays. So sub-cruise plays are effective at sniping kings. But they can't do that. Yeah, if you're if you're cruising someone, you got to... Like, if you landed here, why wouldn't you just land here? Land one of the cruise... Land the cruises here, one infantry defending, and then like land one next to Mecca, maybe. Yep. Good luck holding that. I'd be spreading his special forces out, just so 
it's less impactful if it gets cruised. Yeah, moving his defense units up here. Yeah, he can cut, come around south and cut the road. He's got one. Yeah, iron's gone, at least. Yeah, one cruise, but the cruise... Yeah, that's exactly what a cruise does. So, because the special forces have more defense... One cruise won't take them out. It won't take out two. He should withdraw the damaged ones so he doesn't lose them to a single cruise. <laughs> I like how he runs into the city. So you should note that there's actually a delay, because even though it gets animated, in in the actual game, like an, it, it, it shows an animation where while well, the units will walk to the city, but in the actual game, the units will just get there instantly. One, two... Yeah, he can cruise Damascus now. I'd say they should call. Like, Ironclad style here just doesn't work. Like, the, the second best player on his team spawned pincered between the two best players of the enemy team. You just can't do, like, a carry style. You need to immediately do something impactful on the map to relieve pressure off of your ally. He didn't relieve any pressure. He funneled gold, I guess, but he didn't actually relieve any pressure. Uh, so they were able to kill Saucy. And with Saucy dead, it's a 2v3, and good luck, you know? So I like that the, the carry play, like the, the play style where you just focus on building and fuck your allies is, is not the dominant strategy in, in, in modern, at least not in all cases. It's a very effective strategy, uh, but you can't just use it blindly. Ooh. Dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's still risky, like, you could cruise you and take, but it's not suicidal. Although, at this point, he has nothing that could reinforce this. Uh, like, he, there's, he has nothing that could take the empty cruise. He can't even draft and take it. He's spread so thin. When I say Ava, he was strong early. He kind of fell off, though. Uh, I've seen some bad games out of Eva, so I'm going to disagree with that. Fire your cruise missile before he takes your cruise missile. Fire the one that he can... It's actually vulnerable. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go cruise, cruise Damascus. It's yours. Ooh, modern armor coming. And that one just did the Tokyo Drift. Nice. Perfect. Okay, I'll ask them if they want to call. It is a best of three, so it is certain, yeah. Like, the only thing that could come back from, make them come back from this deficit is sub cruises or nukes. I can't see my own units in spot. <laughs> uh, I'll check for you. 18, I see. Yeah, he really wanted those rails, but at this point you just need quantity of units, and he doesn't have the quantity. Yeah, three infantry, 
one part is in five flags. <laughs> I mean, we, we can, uh, we can play it out. 